Hey, today is day one of my five-day wear test for Clinique Beyond Perfecting Powder Foundation and Concealer. I've been using this for almost two years now. I've got that much left in the pan. I have combination skin. Right now it's kind of oily. I've got a little bit of acne over here to cover up. and large pores up here, facial scarring. Lots of the things that people use foundation like this to cover up. The only thing I've got on my face now is a, a vitamin C serum, an Origins Ginseng moisturizer, lip balm, and a It Cosmetics Bye Bye Under Eye Eye Cream, not the tinted one. So I'm starting with the Tarte Poreless Primer, Armani Master Corrector. If you thin it out too much, it kind of defeats the purpose of putting it on Tarte Shape Tape. That's all the shape tape I need. Too Faced Shadow Insurance. Then I'm gonna put on this. And originally when I started using this foundation, this powder foundation from Clinique, I was just using a brush and I wasn't getting the coverage that I wanted to. And then I saw the Talia, the Tay, the Tay, the Tayla, the Tayla use this. She used it with the sponge that came with it, and the sponge is hiding right underneath there. So I put it on with the sponge, and then I blend it out with a brush. And I find then I get better coverage with it. But I use a lot more product than what I was using before, too. But I think that's what I need to make it work. Mix number three. Now I'm going to put on the rest of my makeup. This is the Tarte Park Avenue Princess. Lancome a uh, little palette with a contour blush and highlighter. I don't always use a separate highlighting brush. Sometimes I just take the tips, the very tip of this brush into the highlighter and do that instead. This brush is my favorite brush actually because you can use it for blush contour on the side. Use the little tips to do the highlight and you just keep the one thing in your hand. Just Peachy Palette from Too Faced. It's Lancome Le Crayon. Urban Catrice Von D. Lancome Cells Booster XL. Monsieur Vague from Lancome. This is a very old sample of Tarte lipstick. It's a lipstick, but it looks like a lip liner, but it was in a Ulta Beauty bag and I'm trying to use it up. The name of it wore off so I don't know the formula or the name but I do love the color. All right so now I'm gonna give you a close-up. Here's my close-up. There's my forehead. You can see the tarp shape tape doesn't really sit so well underneath it. It's very creased and cracked. There's my coverage. It's about 12 o'clock but I will check in later and let you see how this foundation is holding up. Bye-bye. So this is about eight hours after putting the foundation on. You can see all the powderiness has gone away uh, from the foundation. My bronzer has definitely worn off. The blush stayed. I don't see any highlighter left. You can see that it has settled into the fine lines and wrinkles around my eyes. And I do have a bit of oiliness and it did come off a bit on my chin. But all in all, I think at the, after eight hours wear, of a powder foundation, I think that is not too bad. Hi, it's day two of my foundation wear test. I put some benzoyl peroxide, some clindamycin gel moisturizer under my eyes. I put uh, one drop of facial oil and my IT Cosmetics uh, Bye Bye Under Eye, the blue eye cream, just to see how it wears with different things that benefit professional. I think maybe I'll just use the professional today and see how that holds up. Too Faced Shadow Insurance. Benefit Boeing Brightening Concealer. I wear shade number one. Time for the foundation. I'm still using this old gross sponge, I know. It's disgusting. It's looking pretty cakey around my eyes with that Benefit Concealer. My Tarte. Park Avenue Princess bronzer, that's my favorite. Rose Flush Lancome Blush Palette. I don't know if that's very even. I give up. This is one of the things I really want to use up this year, Fearless Booster. 
a little pink lip gloss. So here's a close-up of my face today. You can see that my under eyes are already looking kind of bad and cakey. I think it's mostly because of the Benefit Concealer with the powder foundation on top. I don't think they, they go together very well. And you can still see that few blemishes and stuff underneath. It's, it doesn't cover them up completely, but you know, it, it does a pretty good job, I think, for a powder foundation. Anyway, there's what I look like today. And I will try to at least take pictures later. Hopefully do a check-in. Bye-bye. Hey, it's Bernadette. It's my 12 o'clock check-in. Actually, I remember to check-in at noon. So sitting on my couch with my screwed up foot, chilling. I did actually go to the grocery store today. So now I've taken a whole bunch of Vicodin and I feel like Jello. But I actually did leave the house. Um, my makeup is holding up relatively well. Can you see there? On my eyes and stuff so I'm I'm quite uh, happy with it so far today and I will see you again at the end of the day bye bye so here's my foundation at the end of day two it's held up pretty well this day I had a nap that's why my eyebrows all messed up and my mascara is a little messed up because of my nap same issues with the chin as in the previous day where it came off on my chin but the rest of my face looks pretty darn good there's some cakiness under the eyes, just like before, and that's mostly, I think, due to the concealer, not the foundation. It's very early in the morning on day three of my Clinique wear test. I put on clindamycin and benzoyl peroxide and let it soak in, and then I put on Origins Gen Z moisturizer and let that soak in for a while, and I remember seeing on YouTube people complaining about it pilling up underneath their makeup. So I just put on this, this prime time from Bare Minerals and I could feel that moisturizer pilling up underneath there. So I hate that gross feeling. It's like when you're a kid and you get glue on your hand and then you, you're getting the glue off. Ooh, I'm doing this really early because we're having a bunch of construction done on the house today. Actually, okay. I can't wait till this is done. This is just, this tube is just lasting forever. One day, I'll get a real camera for you guys and stop trying to do this on my phone all the time. When I bought this, Bells or Beals, whatever you want to call it, talking to the lady, I wanted the Beyond Clinique Beyond Perfecting Liquid foundation and concealer but the lightest shade they had was cream whip and it just was too dark for me she said try the powder foundation that might work for you and so this is the cream whip powder foundation and i noticed online they've got a, a lot of lighter colors than this so i wonder if they came out with more colors than what they had two years ago or if they didn't have those colors in stock but so i thought this was the lightest color and then when I was looking online to get pictures for you guys, I was like, what? There's all these lighter colors. I kind of like it by the end of the day, how it looks. It looks a little less cakey. However, the color powder face products seem to wear off throughout the day, and I don't like that. That's, that's my only gripe. I'm pretty much doing the same stuff I did in my other video, so I'm not really going to explain it again. Oh, I'll do the same... I look for like a week or two weeks or I might alternate between two different eye looks because I have enough brushes to do that and then I wash my brushes and then I will do a totally different look. Um, my boyfriend hates it if I rub like uh, makeup brushes on his towels. I think most people would hate that too. I'm a Sills Booster XL. This does not get enough love on YouTube. Nobody wears this except for me, but I'm addicted to it. Oh, there's the Monsieur Big again. I haven't tried this without the Sills Booster, but I certainly like it. I almost make my lashes look fake. Here's my close-up. I'm not putting anything on my lips yet because I still have to eat breakfast. So there's me. There's up close with my freshly applied makeup. My chin doesn't look so great. I'll try to check in with you later, take some pictures, and I'll see you at the end of the day. Bye-bye. So this is the end of the day. I had my makeup on for about 14 hours this day, so this is around 14, 15 hours. 
it really set into my fine lines and wrinkles. You can see all my pores there, all my enlarged pores, and it didn't hold up on my chin at all by the end of the day. I didn't take a nap or lay down or anything that would have rubbed my makeup off, but as you can see, all the redness has come through on my chin for sure. And then on my forehead, it actually looked pretty good on my forehead. It got a, a little bit oily, but I think after 14, 15 hours, I think that's pretty good for my forehead. Just my chin was the problem for me. Hi, it's day four of my foundation wear test for the Clinique Beyond Perfecting Powder Foundation. I am in a hurry this morning, so I put on my makeup without you. The only thing I did different is that I put on my chin where this acne is, I put a little bit of eyeshadow primer there to hopefully get better wear. And I made a better effort to spray setting spray there. I used up the last of the Origins Ginseng Moisturizer, so I didn't use that today. Instead, I opened up a new one, Garnier Skin Active Clearly Brighter Sunscreen SPF 15 brightening and smoothing daily moisturizer. I used that today instead of the ginseng and I had no pilling up with this as I did with the last one. So anyway, here's some close-ups. There's my crappy under eye from the shave tape. There's how my makeup looks today. It's about 8.30 in the morning and I'll try to check in with you later on. I'm hopefully gonna make some videos today. See you soon. So it's the end of the day on day four. This is after about 13 hours of wear. The rest of my face looks good. It's only my chin that's the problem. Where the makeup wore off, even though I put on extra setting spray, it, uh, it didn't seem to help very much. It's about nine o'clock in the morning on day five. I was having a bad hair day today. This was a day that I had to use dry shampoo. I skipped a lot of makeup steps. I did a one shadow eyeshadow look and I didn't put any Lancome Sills Booster XL on underneath my Monsieur Big Mascara and I didn't put any setting spray on. So th this is a real true test day for the foundation. It's about 10 hours later. I was crying this day so all of my mascara is gone. I had a terrible day. My hair looks awful. I was blowing my nose a lot, so it's all gone from my nose and it's all gone from my chin. There's not a whole lot of foundation left on my face except on my cheeks and my forehead. So this Clinique Beyond Perfecting Powder Foundation is the only powder foundation I've ever tried. Oh, the only true powder compact foundation. I've tried Bare Minerals Foundation, but I don't consider them to be the same entity. I would like to try other foundations. I feel like this is the one that if I try other ones and I'm disappointed, I probably go back to this one. I would like to see what other powder foundations are on the market and what, what they do compared to this Clinique Powder Foundation. Would I repurchase it after I've tried other powder foundations I might repurchase it. It's not something I would run out and repurchase as soon as I run out of it. Thanks very much for joining me in this five-day wear test for the Clinique Beyond Perfecting Powder Foundation. If you liked this video, please give it a like. Any YouTube video you like, it, it makes it more in the forefront for other viewers to have access to watch that video. So those likes are really helpful to YouTubers. So if you want to help me out like that, please give it a like. And, and even if you just genuinely liked my videos, please give it a like. And if you want to see more content like this, more five-day wear tests, you're very much invited to subscribe to my channel. And if I don't have a set schedule for uploads, so if you want to get notified of when I upload a video, please ring that bell. That will help you to know when I've got something new posted. Bye-bye.